Join us for a review of the Mercedes E-Class facelift as a state special version here today, the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain. Let's go! In the front here, the new Mercedes E-Class with a facelift receives different front grilles, also updated for example the so-called avant-garde trim, but here the E-Class All-Terrain gets a separate own front grille with this design with the holes right there, two horizontal fins and then a grid structure below that, in between, here up and down, and also this stronger lower grille with the high gloss black, so a very strong appearance already in the front and giving us something of this off-road character. 4 meters 92, 16 foot 1 or 194 inches is the length and here we go. Hello. So here we are. Side mirrors fold in at the moment, black cover and also black frames around the windows. Put a head on the inside, then the mirrors fold out. And special unique feature for this all-terrain version, here the big crossover cladding right there, front and in the rear. In the rear, however, it's a little bit split here by the rear door. That looks kind of weird. And it always comes with big wheels, 19 or 20 inch. Here today we have the 19 inch wheels, also with an aerodynamic design, optional 20 inch. I think this is also big enough here at the moment, winter tires, so it will look even more impressive with the summer tires then. And here we go with the rear where the facelift changes for the sedan are a little bit more striking. Here with the estate versions it's more or less the Talem design which looks more modern in this dot structure LED. Really cool. E450 the engine for today. But here the all-terrain version is again more unique with this high gloss cover here in the lower area. So next to the hatch and then another one here. Well is it off-road diffuser, shall we call it that way, here in the lower area. Really interesting. As for engines, you get 2-liter 4-cylinder or 3-liter 6-cylinder, both petrol and diesel. The main engine for today and also in general for here, the E-Class All-Terrain, will be the E450. That's a 3-liter inline 6-cylinder turbo petrol engine, around 360 horsepower, all-wheel drive, rear-wheel bias. Around 5 seconds is the acceleration figure to 1 km or 62 miles an hour and the so-called EQ boost that means it's a mild hybrid technology. Inside of the doors where you control the seats and also seat heating, seat cooling. Then this beautiful mad wood insert here, especially in sunlight. And then the interior here with the new steering wheel, capacitive buttons, new design. This is a standard steering wheel. Optional, you can also go for the AMG line with the AMG line design where I have a two-spoke steering wheel design which looks sporty and the steering wheel itself is also a little bit smaller. I would recommend that actually as for the steering wheel. Seats, there are different versions available and the good thing is here that the E-Class offers a wide variety of sustainable animal-free seats. For example, especially for European markets, you can get here fabric on the inside also for the all-terrain and then leatherette or Artico Ambitex looks like this on the outside in black, beige and grey so it's ideal for keeping cool in summer and warm in winter and having a great premium look to it. The US market for the all-terrain will probably then feature full Artico or Ambitex seating also in different colors. Um, this one here you see at the moment however the optional animal skin surface. Getting inside, nice seating comfort here of course in the E-Class, good you know sedan seating position or in this case then the estate and when I put the seat all the way down like this, one means A6, 6 foot 1, still leaves home headroom here. Usually the new E-Class facelift always comes with digital instruments now and also this widescreen format, but in 10.25 inch left and right. This would be standard. Optional or standard here for the all-terrain version, the wider, bigger setup, 2 times 12.3 inch 
so two times the bigger screens and this of course a very impressive setup. Zoom more details to all of these screens, to both screens, will be very interesting. And then you can see you can get, get different decal elements here, the matte wood for example. You hear that, also feel that, no fingerprints, also here in this middle console final, really very nicely done. Then I like it that we still have the manual climate unit here, so we can control the while driving in a very nice way. Then we have here on this mat surface cable connection for your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And um, underneath the smartphone here also an inductive charging pad. Then adaptive cup holders. And then there's this touchpad you can use for the infotainment system, for example. This is also quite helpful and you can also write an address on that if you like. And here the dynamic select, this is then for the driving modes. The GPS, which has yeah, quite good responsive times. Happy with the software right here. Use it by a touch. Use it with a um, right a thumb here on the steering wheel that is possible. Or then with the lower touchpad possible too. And interesting here for example for the comfort setting, the um, ambient lighting, um, different colors and so on. This is always really fancy to use. Of course, ocean blue or purple sky are my favorite ones. The massage is really nice and of course also an option here for example with the wave massage. It also goes to the seating area and this is good for long drives that you also have some movement on the seating area that you don't get like you know <laughs> fatigue in your lower area and that's um, definitely a good thing to have right here. So the menu is actually quite simple, CarPlay accessed by this and when we listen to the sound system, which is not the optional Burmester 3D sound system here, but the standard one, I mean, yeah, there is a very notable difference to this optional Burmester sound system, but it already does the job. Let's take it that way. And here, once again, if you want to take a look at the CarPlay integration. And here we go with the digital instruments. You can slide with your left thumb here in this menu with the new capacitive buttons. So you can change the middle part and then you can also change what you want to have on the sides here, for example. So this is also possible. And then you can also go to this whole main menu and switch around everything else. You can have, for example, GPS map in there. This is, of course, really helpful. So you can have it like this, but you can also go for the full screen like this and then it's all over the place. This of course is one of the most helpful features always of the digital instruments. Last but not least you can change the whole styling here as well. It's always nice to see for example for sports gauges this is one of the options. In the head-up display a little bit difficult to see it now in brightness here with the current speed, a loud speed or some GPS information, a very helpful feature definitely. As for the rear, you have soft touch at the inside of the doors here as well and again this beautiful matte wood insert, wow. And it would be easier if you put the seat a little bit higher to put your feet underneath it. Usually it's also more comfortable if you sit in the front and have the seat a little bit higher. Um, but here already the recess of the seat does fit. You have to think about this a long vehicle already and then there's not too much legroom considering the length of the vehicle. Of course, you get along with four or five taller adults. And here, then the headroom is also still okay. Electric hatch here, standard and really cool here for the T model or T model estate. The wagon here, this long loading area, one meters and 15. You can see here the luggage fits easily inside. And the width here is also more than a meter right there. Really cool. And the total height, this is important almost 75 centimeters. This here, the cover automatically goes up and down. The cabin trolley also easily fits in here in a vertical way, no problem at all. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Mercedes E-Class E450 all-terrain, a state version, that das T-Modell, <laughs> that's in German. I made that a little bit accelerated, yeah. So, um, Sport Plus mode, here we want to test the performance of that engine first. Inline six cylinder, about 360 horsepower. About five seconds is the acceleration figure, one kilometers or 60 miles an hour. Let's drop behind a little bit and see a safe passage entry into the motorway. We accelerate from 30 kilometers an hour to whatever. Let's go.
stopped. That's 140 kilometers an hour. I'll tell you that's blocking us at the moment, but really good acceleration. And now we can test how is the acceleration when we are already at speed from 120 kilometers an hour. That's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and I mean, this is here the so-called off-road version or uh, crossover version. And super silent once again, the E-Class, one of the most silent vehicles on the market. Maybe just the S-Class is a little bit more silent at higher speeds, but here at 200 kilometers or the 125 miles an hour, what the perfect noise isolation. It's like driving 100 with some other vehicles now on the brakes. Good feeling to that as well. Um, lane changing also at higher speeds, car remains stable, although we have the air suspension. It is delivering us a very comfortable ride, yes, but it's not shaking up too much. And especially here in the Sport or Sport Plus mode, it's getting stiffer, so we have less rolling of the vehicle, so you always remain flexible having these drive modes. So, really cool for me, acceleration, and also quite nice sound here, six cylinder sound, really like that. So definitely one of my favorite engines. Now we go back to the comfort mode, relax a little bit more, we go into the tunnel and in that tunnel we can always see a little bit more for example of the, of the, what's coming there, that's some buffers probably right. So here for example we can set the ambient lighting, the brightness is all the way well, right there. In color. I think we should go here. Ocean blue. There we go. That's better, right? So here, beautifully done. We can see the blue better here to the interior. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. So really cool as for the very central ambient lighting in the tunnel. And then once again, what a relaxing motorway vehicle. Really perfect as for the air suspension. The big wheels are actually okay. And also steering wheel feeling. It's not, you know, really harsh or hard. Um, it's rather a very soft setup. Um, you have to like that. And then let's go back to Sport Plus mode to have the biggest boost. Boost and once more acceleration from 100 kilometers up to, let's see where we go. That's 177, and what? what's going on here? Oh, okay, now we can drive again. Here we go. Really stable once again, also in this high speed corner. 2 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Now I do a lane change at a really high speed, although having air suspension. Yeah, really stable, very good in control. Sport Plus mode is keeping the air suspension tight like an IMG. Wow. So nicely done that you can adjust it really, going from this air carpet soft ride to a sporty ride, which really comes close to an AMG model as for the suspension. Really, really nice. Now harden the brakes here down to 120. Of course, you can't deny the weight of the vehicle, no doubt about that. And then you think you want to have some calmness and comfort again, switch it back to the comfort mode, and then you have that suspension, you know, flying you over the road once again. Definitely driving-wise, you can just confirm that the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain is one of the dream estates on the market. And now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain. Yes, for sure, one of the dream estates on the market. A great unique look with this crossover cladding, big wheels, air suspension, great comfort. On the inside also a high trim level and, especially on the European market, great seating choices also available, not today, but in general, different colors for the fabric leatherette mix. This is also then perfection then here in this segment. The US market then most probably get the Artico MV text in a full way seating then. So I really like the unique styling. Interior could be a little bit more space on the rear bench in general for E-Class, but nice updates they have there also for the infotainment screen with the MBUX latest version. 
big screen setup here, standard for the all-terrain. Yeah, and then about this capacitive steering wheel. Hmm. I mean, while driving it's quite okay as for the steering input, yes, but controlling it on the buttons while driving is harder than before. That's to me a stack backwards. The AMG line steering wheel, by the way, for the E-Class face, this is really cool, it looks fancier, it's also better to handle, also smaller and so on, but there, again, the capacitive buttons, I think this is one of the step backwards. Everything else has been nicely updated here with the facelift, also new with the tail lamps, whereas the sedan, however, looks way more different than the pre-facelift version, whereas the estate version here doesn't look that much changed. So, what do you think about our driving part also for today? Good also this inline six-cylinder engine. I can really recommend you to go for this one if you go for a Mercedes. Of course, not the cheapest choice, but that's definitely not the all-terrain version of the E-Class. Looking forward to your feedback. Is this your favorite E-Class? Is this your favorite estate? Put it in the comments. Let's discuss this vehicle here and also see you next time.